Hello, a and one students at Madison Area Technical College. This is our first muscle lab, and I, I Gina Piscatelli, will introduce you to muscles in the head, face, neck, and trunk. These are listed as muscles number 1 through number 12 on pages 172 and 173 in your lab manual. So let's start with the muscles in the face and the head. There are two groups. One group is the muscles of face, facial expression. The second group includes muscles that help us chew, or the muscles of mastication. So the muscles of facial expression include these first four muscles, the orbicularis oris, the orbicularis oculi, the zygomaticus, and the epicranius. The muscles of mastication include these two muscles listed, the masseter and the temporalis. So most of these muscles are paired, meaning one on the left, one on the right with the same name, except the one around the mouth that helps us to purse our lips the orbicularis oris is just one muscle around the mouth. In addition, the epicranius, which is on the forehead and helps us to elevate our eyebrows, is just one muscle. So here's a picture of the various muscles. The epicranius <coughs> is on the forehead right up here. Sometimes it's called the frontalis, um, and it is connected by a connective tissue aponeurosis to this occipitalis or um, posterior belly as well. But we're just going to learn the epicranius, okay? The front. Then the orbicularis oculi, there's two of those right and left, surround the eye. They help us to... Uh, blink and squint, closing our eyelids. The orbicularis oris is around the mouth. There's only one of those. And it helps to close and purse our lips, allowing us to kiss and speak. Then the zygomaticus is involved with smiling. And its origin is on the zygomatic arch, and its insertion is in the dermis of the skin at the corners of the mouth. The temporalis, again, is bilateral, and it is located in the temporal fossa, its origin, and the insertion is also on the mandible. So it helps us chew, like the masseter is on, um, the, the insertion is on the mandible, but the origin is on the zygomatic arch. So let's just go through these one more time, looking at their actions. So here's the action of the orbicularis oris. It helps us to close and purse our lips. Here is the action of both orbicularis oculi. The muscles help us to squint and blink our eyes. The zygomaticus on both sides, back bilateral, um, raises the lateral corner of our mouth. So when we smile, both zygomaticus muscles are working. Sometimes when we sneer, you know, only lift one side of our mouth, that's only one of the muscles versus both. The epicranius raises the eyebrows. It gives us this surprised look. <clears throat> And the masseter helps us to chew. I don't actually have an action here, but you can see the origin and insertion in this picture. Um, the masseter muscle is colored purple on the skull, and the origin is really the whole zygomatic arch, truthfully. It's not just the, um, it's not just the zygomatic bone like it looks there. And the insertion 
is located um, in the ramus of the mandible. The temporalis has an origin in the, tempor um, the temporal fossa. It's shown on in red on the skull here. I know my highlighter is blue. I should fix that. Make it yellow. And the insertion is on the coronoid fossa. I mean the coronoid process of the mandible. So right here. <coughs> Now let's look at the trunk muscles. There are four muscles um, that make up part of the abdominal wall. Three of those will also be located a little bit posterior as well. So these include the rectus abdominis, the external oblique, the internal oblique, and the transverse abdominis. All of these can help compress the abdomen when they contract, but I've listed here their unique features. The features that um, make them different from one another. So the rectus abdominis helps us do sit-ups, and what we're really doing in that case is flexing our vertebral column, bending it. Both of the external and internal oblique help to rotate the vertebral column. And we'll look at a picture of that. And the transverse abdominis, the main role is to compress the abdomen. So we'll look at each one of those. So let's start with the rectus abdominis. The rectus abdominis is in the anterior portion of the trunk, and it is um, bilateral in the sense that it's on the right and the left, but it encompasses all of these muscles. They're not, it's really one muscle, but all of these muscle fibers that are underneath a white aponeurosis that's been cut off of this left side. So the rectus abdominis, when it shortens, helps us to flex our vertebral column. The external oblique has muscle fibers um, on top of the rectus abdominis that are more on the side of the trunk and then they form this aponeurosis, or this connective tissue, um, in the central part of the body. The internal oblique is um, underneath the external oblique, and also sitting on top of the rectus abdominis, and its muscle fibers go in the opposite direction, this way. So the external oblique went that way, internal oblique goes that direction. And the transverse abdominis has muscle fibers that go completely horizontal, connecting the vertebral column with the front of the trunk. So the rectus abdominis has an origin of the um, crest of the pubic symphysis here. And the insertion is the xiphoid process, as well as um, the costal cartilages of ribs 5 through 7. So when these two points come closer together, it flexes the vertebral column. Now let's look at um, some muscles of the neck. Um, and the vertebral column, particularly the neck. So the sternocleidomastoid helps us to turn our head and bend our head towards our chest. So the sternocleidomastoid is located from the mastoid process 
to the sternum and the clavicle. That's how it gets its name. When both contract, you can bend your head forward. The neck flexes. But when one contracts, the head turns to the opposite side. So in this case, the skull, the skeleton, is looking towards his left. And that means that the right sternocleidomastoid contracted. The other muscle um, group, really, it's muscle number 12 for this lab that we'll be learning, are muscles that run vertically along the posterior vertebral column. Collectively, all these muscles are called the erector spinae group, but there are different, um, each of these has a different name. Splenius capitus, we're not going to go through all those. We're just going to call anything that's running from the skull and down the vertebral column, the erector spinae. The function of the erector spinae muscles are as they sound, and that is to keep the spine erect. So they help you stand up straight, extend your vertebral column, as well as your head. Thank you. That's all for this particular muscle lab.